Next at 10 o'clock, here comes the bitter cold. We find out how low temperatures will go and why tears were shed as Prince Harry finished a remarkable journey. Live from Chicago's number one news, ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 10 starts right now. Here we go again. First, the cleanup from a snowstorm, the third in a week, and now tumbling temperatures. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ravi Bage. Well, Karen Jordan is off tonight, and our wicked weather just goes on and on, up to seven inches of snow during our latest storm. And we'll have a series of live reports for you on all the cleanup efforts, but let's begin with meteorologist Tracy Butler. She's in the Weather Center with a look at just how much snow we got again today, Tracy. Hi there, Ravi. A little bit later on, Ravi. All right, Tracy, thanks very much. The snow creating a big mess on roads in the south and southwest suburbs. And they were the first to get hit in all this. And in the hours since, a lot of progress has been made cleaning up thanks to the plows, the snow blowers, and good old fashioned shovels. Eyewitness News reporter Michelle Gallardo picking up the story now from Southwest Suburban Alsip tonight. Michelle? Ravi, that's right. Seven Eyewitness News. Ravi, back to you. All right, that's one way of looking at it, Michelle. Thanks a lot. Northwest Indiana saw some of the highest snowfall totals, and there were plenty of accidents triggered by sloppy roads. Eyewitness News reporter Evelyn Holmes begins her report tonight with a driver facing trouble getting around Gary. All right, Evelyn, thanks a lot. And the weather is causing big problems at Chicago's airports. More than 130 flights have been canceled at O'Hare. And those cleared for takeoff are delayed up to 25 minutes. At Midway tonight, about 30 flights have been called off and planes there running up to two hours behind schedule. The city of Chicago moved its full fleet of plows and salt spreaders onto residential streets after dealing with the main roads. And Eyewitness News reporter John Garcia joining us now live from the Westtown neighborhood with more on this. John. From the near west side, John mm -hmm. Garcia, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Ravi, back to you. All right, John, thanks very much. And in our next half hour, heavy snow. It's a problem from Missouri to Maine, the dangerous conditions that two massive storms are causing. And you can follow our storm as it moves east on our ABC 7 Chicago weather app, along with our website and all of our social media sites. Still ahead for us tonight, the plot revealed why a teenager opened fire in his high school yesterday in Colorado. Also, final farewell. There's some controversy as Nelson Mandela will be laid to rest tomorrow. And later, a giant jackpot. Just how big is the Mega Millions prize going to get after nobody matched the numbers last night? Now, from Chicago, you're watching Ruby Beachwall, Karen Jordan, Sports with Raver Weigel, and Weather with Meteorologist Phil Schwartz. ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 10 continues. The Sea community held a memorial for the victims who were killed at Sandy Hook Elementary School one year ago today. An interfaith candlelight vigil was held at the Sikh Religious Society in Palatine. The Sikh community also experienced gun violence back in August of 2012 when there was a mass shooting at a Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Lieutenant Brian Murphy was the first responder to that shooting and he was shot 15 times, one of those shots hitting his voice box. My task on August 5th was to stop someone from causing more damage. And I was fortunate that God granted me the power to do that and to still be here. Last year, 10,000 people were killed with gun violence nationwide, a thousand of those victims right here in Illinois. In Washington, President Obama and the First Lady lit candles at the White House to honor the victims of the tragedy in Newtown. They also observed a moment of silence. Hours earlier, in his weekly radio address, President Obama said the nation has not done enough to make its community safer by keeping dangerous people from getting guns and healing troubled minds. Tonight, we're learning what caused a student to plot yesterday's shooting at a Colorado high school. The police say that 18-year-old Carl Pearson was recently kicked off the school's debate team and he was looking for revenge against the teacher who runs that team. A student, 17-year-old Claire Davis, was shot in the head and now is fighting to survive. Investigators also say Pearson legally bought a 12-gauge shotgun about a week before that shooting. Nelson Mandela is back home tonight. The body of the former South African president has arrived in Kunu, where he will be buried after his funeral tomorrow. A convoy of police and military escorted the vehicle, carrying Mandela's casket to his family compound, and people lined the route to watch it pass. And when Mandela's casket reached his family's home, the national flag covering it was replaced with a leopard skin. That is a tribal tradition honoring a leader. 
Reverend Jesse Jackson, who is in South Africa, explains how Mandela helped change the country since 1979. Blacks had to have pass books. There were no blacks working in the airport as a flight attendants or pilots or, or the like. And so this is such a new place. Uh, uh, it's so free. Tribal elders and family members will hold a private vigil for Mandela overnight. Up next, meteorologist Tracy Butler with the latest on our falling temperatures and how long they will be with us. Also, the new jackpot, the Mega Millions Prize, soaring once again. All right, one of the largest jackpots in U.S. lottery history is getting even larger after no ticket matched all six numbers to win the $425 million Mega Millions jackpot last night. So the now look, look what the prize is worth, $550 million. That makes it the fourth biggest ever. Officials say it is likely to grow even bigger before the drawing, which happens on Tuesday. The largest Mega Millions jackpot ever claimed was that $656 million bucks back in March of 2012. I remember going to the store to do the stories and buying one mm -hmm. and two, and it turned into 20, and I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> you would be here anyway. I would, I would. Want, right? I love it, I love it. Good yeah. to see you. Nice to well, see you on thanks. the weekend. Yeah. You look very holiday-like, and this is holiday weather that we have, well, isn't we kinda, it? We kind of match. Yeah. I usually don't stay up this late. I'm a little, Louise, keep that caffeine coming. <laughs> You're uh, not jumpy at all. Uh, no, <laughs> no yeah. not at all. Near 40 here Thursday, and then Friday will mm. be a day where those temperatures do drop off. All right, so one brief moment. A couple brief moments. Over, uh, yes. okay, over, over freezing. Good stuff. Right. Thank you so much. A big goal for a gala tonight in Chicago. Organizers hoping to raise $3.5 million to help find a cure for type 1 diabetes. The Chance of a Lifetime Gala, hosted by the JDRF, which is formerly known as the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, and Mayor Rahm Emanuel, well, he spoke at the gathering there. It featured dinner along with the silent and live auctions. JDRF is the world's largest funder and advocate for type 1 diabetes research. Well, the Lynch family made that trip out to New York for the Heisman ceremony, and the results were a little surprising. We have the details up next in sports. And later, Prince Harry's triumph at the South Pole. At the Chrysler Big Finish event. All right, time for Rafer. Uh, some of the Chicago's teams had a bit of a tough night tonight, but first, it's all about... Striking the post. You know what? He did better, Jordan Lynch did, than we expected. Imagine if they had won the MAC wow. championship. Wow. Yeah. They I don't know. Given a, lot, a lot of reason to vote for him. Absolutely. And it was a cold one in Toronto. Didn't keep the Hawks fans away. That is love. First period. Hawks down one. They got a two man advantage. Marion Hosa to Patrick Kane from the corner off the stick of the defender. The men in red love it. We are tied. But, uh, you know, it's a great city, and, uh, you know, I, I got a chance to try some of their pizza, and I have to say, Chicago pizza is the best. No, 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 no. No. You can go sit down. There's no debate. <laughs> oh, he, it is better. He, I don't even know why New Yorkers argue that point. He will always have someone who is willing to employ him after saying that. You know what? And That's you know great. what? Hats off to him for having the guts yeah. to say that yeah. out there in New York. Good for him. All right, Rafer. You're back a little bit later. A little bit later with some okay. high school. All right. Thanks so much. And when we come back, a milestone on the moon. What a Chinese space program did that has not been done in decades. Prince Harry and his fellow adventurers have made it to the South Pole. The Royal is a member of one of three teams involving injured soldiers. And two weeks ago, they set out on the 200-mile Walking with the Wounded South Pole Challenge. Prince Harry said the group touched the silver ball marking the South Pole, and that hugs and tears helped mark that milestone. China has carried out the world's first soft landing of a space probe on the moon in nearly four decades. That is according to media reports in that country. The mission is the latest stage in an ambitious space program that aims to eventually put a Chinese astronaut on the moon. A moon rover that's on board the probe will now embark on a three-month scientific exploration. Santa and Mrs. Claus were given a police escort through Chicago as they delivered gifts to some very special kids. It was day one of the seventh annual Operation Santa, a project organized by the Chicago Police Memorial Foundation. They deliver gifts to the children of police officers who have been killed or severely injured in the line of duty. What's so important is that these families realize we have not forgot them, and, and that's what this is all about today. We get more out of this than the kids do because those smiles when we come with the gifts... Operation Santa will visit a total of 35 kids today and tomorrow. They also plan to drop off a poinsettia for the Arlington Heights police officer who was shot on Thursday. 
Just ahead, snowed in 110 million Americans dealing with winter-like weather tonight. Plus, an important fact for some CTA riders. You need to know about this this weekend, about your fare cards. And to the east, places such as Buffalo, New York, are buried under several inches of snow, and more could fall between now and Tuesday. Now, Chicago is not alone in facing winter's wrath tonight. Much of the country is battling storms that suggest it is going to be a long winter. A huge swath of the country bracing for a snow-covered weekend as this huge weather system makes its eastward trek, dumping anywhere from a few inches to a few feet. Some 1,000 flights canceled across the country, but better to be stuck on a frozen tarmac like these planes in Detroit than to be on the roads today in deadly conditions. And with sleet and freezing rain accompanying the snow, many of the nation's roads will once again become treacherous. There have been at least three massive multi-car wrecks this past week alone. A 40-car pileup in Michigan, including two police vehicles, blamed on snow and speed. Thank God my daughter and I are okay. A frustration and relief. He just sideswept me and just kept on going. And further east in New Hampshire, firefighters had to fight fire with ice, dousing this blaze but leaving behind walls of ice just minutes later. And in the snow belt of western New York, where people are used to this, Motorists said they could not see a thing. It's pretty horrible out there right now. Um, I've actually got four-wheel drive on my car and it's been slipping. So that's pretty surprising. And on my way here, it, you can see the road. And the National Weather Service says 6 to 12 inches of snow is expected in New England, with as much as 14 inches possible along the main coast. Areas north and west of New York City and central Pennsylvania could be in for 8 inches of snow or more. Now here in the Chicago area, people are working to clean up the snow before the cold weather moves in and freezes everything. And there is more of it to clean now in the south suburbs. They had some of the highest snow totals in the Chicago area. And while some of us may be grumbling about the snow, for those who make their living plowing it, this is an early Christmas gift. One man told us he and his partner began work at 2 this morning and have not stopped since. Now here in Chicago, the city's plow trucks have turned their attention tonight from the main streets to the side streets. And for others, the goal is to not only make sure drivers can get around, but also cyclists. Divi crews out today making sure bikes were available and ready to go. And you can follow the storm headed east on our ABC7 Chicago weather app, along with all of our social media and numerous websites. Now, some of those CTA magnetic strip fare cards are going to be expiring this weekend. The CTA is reminding customers to check the expiration date stamped on the back of the card. Many of those cards will expire tomorrow and will not work in the rail, in the turnstiles, or on buses. Now, customers can contact the CTA to exchange their old card for a new one, and that will have their balance transferred onto that new card. And a reminder, don't be surprised if you see a mail carrier at your front door tomorrow morning. The Postal Service has received so many packages, workers are going to be delivering them the next two Sundays. You may also be getting packages early on weekday mornings before the regular mail delivery. In Elwood, the Abraham Lincoln National Cemetery is remembering those who fought for our freedom in this holiday season. Volunteers laid wreaths on the graves of the veterans buried there. The cemetery is the final resting place for approximately 34,000 veterans, and officials there say their goal is to one day have a wreath for every one of those grave sites. When we come back, one of Chicago's biggest bar crawls of the year, or pub crawls, why security, event, security for this event is being beefed up this year. Training wheels, how some youngsters are getting a hands-on business lesson with bicycles. The Chicago Movie Theater is saying thank you to its customers with a festive holiday party. Yes, singers greeting people with Christmas carols at the Chatham 14 Theaters, this on West 87th Street. And Mayor Rahm Emanuel stopped by to meet fourth grader Samuel Love, who created a foundation to help Hurricane Sandy victims. Well done. All right, Tracy's back with a little bit more on the weather and... Uh, no big headline here. It's just it's going to be real cold. <laughs> no, yeah. We're, are we getting used to it? I mean, yeah. really. Yeah. You know, this past week, we had two days where it was sub-zero temperature. Waking up <clears throat> to some bitter cold conditions once again. A slight little break, though, on yes, Thursday. Yes, yes, yeah, exactly. Right. Near 40. All right. Be careful if you're going to Cleveland. Tracy, thank you so much. Now, they are building what they call a commuter smart bike. It will be made from state-of-the-art equipment, and it will even charge your cell phone while you ride. 
So tonight in our ABC7 In Your Neighborhood segment, we are going to head to Bridgeport to a small bike shop where a local veterans group is empowering teens to build a product and a business. And they've launched an online crowd raising campaign to collect donations. And to find a link to that or tell us what we should be featuring in your neighborhood, go to our website, abc7chicago.com. All right, Rafer's back talking a little bit more high school sports. Yeah, a little high school basketball, a little high school hockey. Lots good hockey. Good basketball, too. Yes, absolutely. All right, good stuff. Thanks, Rafer. You know, it's fairly common for veterans to get together to swap war stories, unless both are 107 years of age. We'll tell you about that. Plus, this is a fairy tale come true. We will show you the three bears story. It's really amazing. Well, it is fairly common for veterans to get together, swap stories all the time, unless both of them are 107 years old and they're talking about World War II. And that is exactly what happened in Austin, Texas. Take a look at this now. This is Richard Overton and Elmer Hill. They are the oldest known surviving World War II vets. And these two soldiers fought, both of them, in the South Pacific on the same battlefield more than 70 years ago. And Overton says there's so much to tell about his time in the military that he simply can't tell it all. Congratulations. And a scary surprise for a Florida homeowner. She caught a family of bears taking a leisurely dip in her swimming pool. Look at this now. TJ Osbey called 911. Can you imagine? She stumbles upon the scene right here, and then she you know, has a presence of mind to pull out her phone and uh, record it all. One bear, even brave enough apparently to walk right up to Osbey's door looking for something to eat. The animal stuck around for almost an hour before running away. And nearly a week later, Osbey's, Osbey says she is able to laugh about it. And it says here that it could have been very unbearable had she gone outside. I didn't write that, but anyway. <laughs> they were it. looking for that picnic basket. That's yeah. right. That's our report for tonight. For Tracy and for Rafer, I'm Robbie Bagewell. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow.